is $71,000 to the school department for the rep to bring the portables up to code. Is that fair enough? <clears throat> I think that would cover the intent of the, uh, the item. Could I have a second? Second. Any further discussion on this motion? It is for $71,000 and not the uh, uh, proposed 80000 in our original agenda, just to note that. Councilor McLaughlin. Let me rehash a bit what the manager was, the process that the manager was previously describing. An amount of money in the bond was expended for the asbestos removal. For the, the cleanup of the cleanup asbestos the leak that occurred from the roof. What was that amount of money originally scheduled to be used for? It, it primarily came from savings uh, from other roof projects. Uh, all of the flat roof projects, uh, to, to my recollection, all came in <coughs> under bid. Excuse me. All of the flat roofs in the middle school and in the high school and the town hall, which was separate, not bonded. But any, anyway, all of those roofs came in under bid. And so this was secondly and some of it was for direct asbestos removal that was the other major factor okay i'm still uncomfortable with spending that much money and i would like the council to consider and i should have jumped in and made a motion <laughs> yielding here a bit not authorizing that much i really feel that the school department could find more money within their budget to help cover this cost and we would not have to expend up to the 71,000. Traditionally there have been savings in that in the salary account. I learned from a former counselor <laughs> where some of these savings have been in the past and I, I listened. <laughs> yeah. um, I have not gone through the school department budget with a fine tooth comb. I don't intend to do that. That's not what I'm going to be here for. But I really sincerely feel that more money could be found without having an adverse impact on the educational programs for our children. That, that's why I, I continue to have a problem with expending as much as $71,000 out of that bond. If we did not expend that much, we could retire the bond earlier. We do have a motion and we do have a second. There, this is in the context of discussion. I'm not sure we were allowed to amend the actual amount at this particular point. Your, your, your point, however, is well taken. Other further discussion? Councilor Coxon. I'm just trying to remember, Mr. McGovern, what was the money at one point that we authorized the school department to use? But if they were reimbursed, it was going to come back to the town council. For some reason, eighty thousand dollars sticks in my mind. Eighty-four. Eighty-four. Getting better. <laughs> Can you remember what that? I know that's not. That good. was. Uh, Pull it off. Yeah, it, it related to uh, the replacement of underground oil storage tanks. Has that been, re has the school department been reimbursed for that yet? The, yeah, the issue was whether or not they were going to be reimbursed for that, whether or not there was going to be a state program in effect. And my recollection is, uh, because of the doubt for that, uh, you didn't fund it. You know, and as I look at the list that the school board has just gave us uh, for different services and different items under the bid, you'll note that there, there, there weren't funds provided for the underground oil storage tank. So I think those, those were held back and uh, hoped, hoped for that it would be paid for directly by the state uh, with its uh, generous coffers. If I could ask Dr. Goldman another question. 
and I hate to beat a dead horse here, can you tell us approximately how many new teachers are being hired to replace teachers who are at a senior pay level? No, I, I have not analyzed that situation at the moment. I do know that the pattern, excuse me, I <laughs> got you yet. Yet. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the pattern is certainly going to yield some savings. Uh, um, unfortunately, what also happens, and I really feel that I have to say this, uh, school department budgets are like every other kind of nine but million dollar business. We don't necessarily know all the issues that are going to come up in advance. It would be lovely if we did, but we don't. And I have just, uh, within the past week, had to examine a teaching need that's coming up. And we've had two or three uh, small pieces of teaching issues that have come up since the budget was put together that we are absorbing into our budget. So although um, I do have, I certainly, and I would hate to not state that I see a pattern of, of, of uh, difference between those who are leaving and those who are coming in, I do not have it analyzed and would feel uncomfortable giving you any numbers at this point. Can you tell me how many teachers have resigned from the system? From in the past school year? Not, I mean, for instance, we had resignations before we put the budget together. We've had resignations during the budget process. We've had resignations. I had one or two uh, just last week. And I haven't added that number up. Uh, again, there, what, what you're asking of me is to go back to the salary lines and adjust where everybody was when we drew the budget up, take out the people who resigned and substitute what the salary will be for those that we are hiring. Number one, we haven't finished the process. Number two, uh, I've been keeping my eye on it, but I, I'm not comfortable giving you numbers, um, and uh, therefore I can't, um, I, can, I mean, I wasn't, I am not, I was anticipating readjusting my budget when I get through this process and also looking at some of the needs that have become apparent since the budget was put together. That's a normal process for school districts. This problem cropping up, I see other problems that have cropped up. Other maintenance issues were not part of the original bond and that are coming up in all kinds of ways that I'm going to have to address, some of which are coming out as reported to be um, part of this uh, building study. I have some renovation issues. Uh, I have some um, um, some repair issues that have surfaced that we were not aware of when we put the budget together. All of those things we're going to have to take care of. But the fact of the matter is, and I don't want to, I don't know quite how to say this without making it sound sort of strange, but actually the town council owns those buildings. I mean, you built the buildings. The town, the school district did not and cannot build temporary space under the conditions under which these were built. So in fact, who are the landlords? And we are handling the um, issue of trying to be responsible tenants because of the, you know, in, you know, informing you of the situation, trying to deal with it. But we do not own those buildings. You lease them to us. Thank you. I appreciate that. Could, if I could ask the clerk, <coughs> is it in order to amend a motion to ch such as Councilor Jordan made to amend the financial figure? I would like to propose an amendment that we authorize the expenditure of up to $50,000. I can tell you two senior high school teachers who left had to be at very good levels on the pay scale, Don Richards and Dr. Hackett. And I know there are others whose names are escaping me right now. There's going to be a savings there. I appreciate the other expenditures that you are going to be facing, but I really think we have to keep our eye on the overall financial situation and do what we can with this bond money. Not that's enough. Do we have a second to the amendment? No second. Okay, we have an amendment and a second. <coughs> the original motion was for $71,000. The amended motion is for $50,000. Is there further discussion on the issue? Council Council? I was sort of just pointing to... Um, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, to Mrs. Reed, who would like to make a comment. Would you make a comment? Thank you. I know it's out of order. If 
few minutes out of order, why do you want to make a comment? <laughs> Because I sat through the last public hearing, and I know that you're here, people. <laughs> the, uh, I reread the wording of the um, May 90 bond, and I do believe that the wording authorizing the bond would encompass repair of the portables. My concern um, may be lack of knowledge on my part. But my understanding is that when bonded money is used, it's spread over 10 years. The setup costs have all been incurred for the um, bond already. That uh, if that $71,000 were to come out of the current budget, it would be expense. So therefore, the taxpayers who live in Cape Elizabeth this year will pay 100% of the cost. Whereas if it were part of the bond for the remaining nine years, I'm sorry, I still get nervous. Um, then the um, taxpayers who are in the town for the next nine years would be contributing to repayment of that bond. And that is one of the reasons why I thought it would be a, a good idea to uh, use bonded money, but I may be wrong. And if I am, um, then there are a few other people who feel the same way, so I would appreciate hearing if that's valid or not. Just a, a clarification that the portable classroom portion of the bond was a five-year bond. Excuse me. <coughs> five years, not ten, I'm sorry. Thank you very much for your clarifying comments. Uh, is there any further discussion on this amendment for $50,000? Okay. All in favor of the amendment, raise your hand, please. All those opposed? The amendment's defeated by a vote of five to two. Is there any further discussion on the original amendment of $71,000? Councilor Jordan. I have, a, I have a comment, but I'd like to hold my comments until after we vote on this, if you may give me a chance afterwards. Sure. Um, Connie, it's Connie to me, it's Dr. to me, but she prefers Connie, I know. <laughs> we have a motion, we have a second. All those in favor? <coughs> All those opposed? Uh, the vote carries, uh, the motion carries with a vote of five to two. Thank you very much. Well, I, uh, what I just want to say, I have three comments if I may. Surely. I'd like to comment as far as who owns the buildings. We understood who owns the building, building, but we left the authority of constructing them up to somebody else, and that it was a council big, big mistake, and we thought we had common people doing it. We found that out, but that's brought over the down. Number two, what about the trusses? You think they'll ever go up? <laughs> if not, why don't we sell them and use some money there to fix up these portables? Well, I've tried to find somebody who wants to buy them. So they're picking the phone. Anybody's watching this, or anybody has any friends, neighbors, relations, or what have you, um, we have made some preliminary inquiries into that. Um, again, a lot of this does. Uh, we we certainly felt that our study was important because it might raise that issue of is there some other way we can use them. Unfortunately, they are so engineered and specifically made that it's unlikely that somebody is going to have a project that would uh, for, for which these would prove to be the appropriate trust but we would we are we really did try to find a, a buyer last winter and we were unsuccessful in doing that so it's not quite time for doing anything like that well you know i'm looking for good suggestions i guess okay the other question i have to where we at if you can say close or far away or something with a lawsuit that we've been in too for a year. Are you very close or is that going to die a natural death like some lawsuits? The, one aspect of it I think um, has reached a point where um, it hasn't actually formally been closed out but there, it really seems to be a dead end. There are some other aspects so that we are um, particularly as we continue this, this process as I am trying to alert you to we are not through finding out exactly where we are. Um, the discovery phase in these things does in fact take some time. So that um, I would just simply feel comfortable in saying that we haven't closed any doors. Thank you.
any the understanding of the council is that the building permits have been issued for these repairs yes yes thank you <laughs> item number 55 <laughs> is to consider authorizing the town manager to sign three leases for portable classrooms with the Cape Elizabeth School Department and take any necessary action I'm going to defer to the town manager on this item uh, thank you mr. chairman uh, as in past years, uh, we, as uh, Dr. Coleman just pointed out, these, these are in fact owned by the town, even though they were constructed under the management of uh, other persons. But uh, we, we do own them. We, we have offered leases to the school board. The school board has agreed to accept the leases. Uh, basically, what it provides is that uh, we would charge $8 per square foot. It adds up to a total of about $105,000. Of the $105,000, uh, about 30000 of it is subsidized uh, by the state as a part of the normal uh, school funding formula, and the balance has been budgeted within the school budget uh, from their local appropriations. So this lease amount is, is fully uh, budgeted in the school budget, and uh, it is fully recognized as a revenue municipal budget. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Manager. If I may, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Councilor. I want to make sure I understand the man's card. The lease figures out to be about 105. That's right. Um, we only get 30,000 back from the state. It's approximately 30,000. That's correct. So in five years, we're not going to get our money back, which I understood that's what it was going to be when we originally got the bills that. Within the five years, it would be paid off, but they were yeah. at that rate then. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, the town council and I, and I think the school board, understood that uh, we, these were fully reimbursable at 100% and not reimbursable as a part of the subsidy calculation. Uh, recently, uh, after some discussion, superintendent of schools had with the school business manager, with myself, uh, we realize that it's reimbursed at the subsidy rate. Interesting. Thank you. Thank you for that clarification. I would love to get a motion on the table, and then we could have a discussion on this particular item, number 55. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Councillor McLaughlin. I move that we authorize the town manager to sign the three leases for portable classrooms with the Cape Elizabeth School Department. I'll second. Thank you. And discussion? Councillor Cogsell. These are the same leases we've authorized in the past. Just okay. with the dates changed. Okay. Further discussion? All those in favor? The vote is 7 to 0. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Bowman. Thank you. Would you stay for the next item, please? Since you're here. <laughs> Thank you. Item number 56 is to consider an amendment to the school traffic regulations and take any necessary action. And I will call upon the town manager to present this item. Yes. Um, this issue has actually been before the council probably six times. Uh, it uh, was also discussed by the school board back in perhaps May or June. Uh, it has been before the planning board. It has been before the zoning board. And it's now coming back to you to simply uh, put in uh, enactment form. And I haven't mentioned what it is yet, but it's, uh, it relates to the traffic flow in and around the school grounds and in and around the, the uh, public works garage. Specifically, uh, presently, recently constructed, uh, is a connector road between the middle school and the high school. It's proposed uh, on that that be one way going from uh, the middle school, elementary school complex uh, down to the high school. This compromise came ab about as a result of a meeting held with all the principals, with, uh, a number, with at least one counselor present, with, school with other school administrators present, and with the school bus folks. And the building, the road has been con constructed on that basis. Uh, second, it's proposed that there be no parking along this connector road because it is narrow. Uh, and has not been designed for parking. Uh, third, uh, that vehicles uh, not use Jordan Way for access or, or egress to the school complex, uh, except for equipment that's going in and out of the bus, the uh, public works garage being serviced or fueled. 
Uh, this, this is in keeping with all of the discussion that was held previously. There is one change, and, and that's that it would not apply to mowers during mowing operations, that if someone saw a mower going the wrong way, they wouldn't ask why it, why it wasn't ticketed. Uh, there, there, what, there is concern, and what I'd like to do is, uh, I, Councilor Cogsell and uh, I think uh, Chairman Crailman and uh, Councilor McLaughlin all raised to me the issue of referring to the some of the, the references to the Pond Cove School Complex. Uh, that uh, is for some reason what it's always been called, but for purposes of this ordinance, maybe it ought to be made clear that call it the school complex rather than the Pond Cove School Complex so people understand that really we're talking about the school plant complex here. So I'd like to suggest is number one that you remove where it says Pond Cove School Complex that you strike Pond Cove and just have it uh, within the Perhaps Central School Complex. Do you, do you have a name for it? School don't campus. Don't you need to designate elementary and middle so that you don't think it's the high school complex? Yeah. It, anyway, Councilor Cogswell also it's mentioned it. She, she found this as, as as I did when I was trying to write it up, long and confusing. And perhaps as long as the intent, everyone agrees that maybe if we put it out in a in an outline form, that it might be a lot easier to follow and understand. But we would not at all change the intent but it would set it up in enactment form at your next meeting with all these same provisions, except it would be in an outline form rather than a paragraph narrative form. I would go on with that. I, I had noted new paragraphs for each of those sentences in 13.7.4. They, they tend to get lost otherwise, and I think mm -hmm. they're all worthy of standing on their own. Mm -hmm. Good so that can be clarified suggestion. at the public hearing in September. That's fine. Right. Could I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, if I could ask um, Connie a question before we pursue this any further. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for bearing with us. One of, there's no proposed change here to the traffic flow around the mall between the middle school and the Pond Cove school. It is to, and the wording is that it shall be one way counterclockwise as it is right now around the entire middle school mall do, between Scott Dyer Road and Holman, Holman Field. That's my understanding. Okay. What kind of conversations have there been within the school department about restricting vehicles in the lower part of the mall? Um, by restricting vehicles, are you thinking about people coming to the athletic field? I'm thinking of people dropping their children off in the morning. Well, we have, have talked about the possibility of having a drop-off or encouraging parents to drop off kids in front of, you know, Scott Dyer, um, the, uh, or possibly making use of the uh, small path, you know, the, the, I can't think what the exact access road that comes to the uh, back of the middle school. Uh, we haven't actually finalized that. I do have a meeting with my administrators this week, so we will be talking about some of those nuts and bolts issues. Um, again, I'm afraid like everything else, we are going to have to, you know, stand there and watch this and see where some of the issues are. We have been urging parents to drop off kids uh, and not come into that uh, horseshoe as much as possible anyway, because even, even without making any changes, the traffic pattern at the 4-5 upper end is, is really a very difficult situation for us. Um, the bus safety, uh, there are pylons out there to try to, uh, to control this. We have difficulty with uh, some congestion in the morning and so on and so forth. So that, um, again, we have asked people doing the space study to take into consideration this problem. And when you, when, if you were in a helicopter looking down at this complex, and thinking of the how squished we are with the two, um, you know, the long rectangular uh, buildings and, and that rather restricted mall, uh, and then look at the high school with its its expanse of parking and so forth, comparatively speaking, uh, for the numbers of kids. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. So part of what we're trying to do is to figure out what do we do about this traffic flow. Uh, when we get into the reporting the traffic. Uh, I mean, the, um, the building use report, we have some interesting ideas. I don't know how many of them <laughs> will survive to the final report, but uh, it is exactly that kind of problem that's driving us crazy. So this is, everybody knows, is simply an attempt to 
cut down on this a little bit, see what happens, and uh, we'll no doubt have to keep adjusting it. But we would be asking uh, for some recognition on parents' part that this is a very difficult issue for us. It was before any of the alterations to Jordan Way. It certainly probably isn't going to get any easier. And the one-way access we do think does address some of the concerns people have about traffic coming from the high school in the afternoon and zipping up by Pond Cove School. Uh, from a safety standpoint, this was of concern to the staff at Pond Cove, particularly since we have some programmatic reasons to ask uh, youngsters to cross that mall, which is, uh, you know, just we shouldn't have through through a school uh, esplanade. Uh, and, but we're not going to get rid of all of those issues in one fell swoop. So this is a modification that we felt, uh, again, asking people's cooperation. And we will certainly try to do our job to get that information out to parents. Great. Thank you. I appreciate the update on that status, because I know that was a topic of discussion at the meeting Mr. Robin mentioned. And I'll look forward to seeing some of those ideas in your final report. <laughs> now, I, I really appreciate the fact that you're dealing with that. I, having had my children survive, going through both those schools. I'm very thankful. And, you know, I know how dangerous it can be there, and I know that the infractions of the traffic regulations that I have seen there, and that brings me to saying to the manager, these had better be enforced. It, it's obviously yeah. a no-win situation for us, and we are making a, a step-by-step -step approach to sorting it out. Yeah, the, these, I'm glad you raised that issue uh, of enforcement. Uh, yes, you know, the public hearing on this is not until September 9th. I believe school probably begins yes. the 5th or so? 4th. Yeah. What we will do is we're going, we're going to have all the signs posted and up, and uh, because you know, it hasn't been discussed for so long, uh, how, you know, and we'll, we'll give people warnings and, you know, instructive information so that they become accustomed to the new patterns. They will be in school for half a week. The children will be there for half a week before our next council meeting. And this being a typical ordinance, it would not go into effect for 30 days. Traffic okay. regulations don't take 30 they days. Do, are they immediate? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we don't have to do emergency or anything like that. I'll double check that. Would you, if, it, if the only way to get this in effect as soon as we vote on it next month is to do it by emergency vote, I would like that to be so advertised. I think it's imperative that we get these in place with the enforcement capability. Thank you. Councilor Pearson. Councilor Crailman, I was, I was going to make a motion that the amendments to the school property traffic regulations be prepared in a clear, concise manner and made ready for public hearing on September 9th. Second. 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 That's 7.30. <laughs> Thank you. I have a, a motion and a second. Is there further discussion on this item? Councilor Jordan. I just, this is a kind of an offhand comment that I have because I am very concerned about these, these people and I'm very disappointed that you have set this up this way. And that is not to allow parking for the elderly people to pull up there and watch the athletic field, ball games and what have you like they have been able to in the past, and I think it's a damn shame that we've got to have a law there, but we can't have an area for elderly people or people that want to sit in their car and watch a game like they've been able to in the past with the public works people parking area. Something in the afternoon, we have very little traffic. I think it's very short-sighted and very unconcerned of elderly people. Mr. Jordan, uh, Councilor Jordan, Bill. Yes, <laughs> either one you want. They, uh, as, as one looks at the middle school complex, I'm sure new patterns are going to develop. And what you're going to be seeing is people go all the way to the end of the middle school in that driveway, and they're still going to park facing direct out into Holman Field. Nothing here prohibits that. This is no parking on the connector road but that does not prohibit parking along <coughs> the final end of that parking area that, that looks out over Holman Field. I thought you'd done away with that parking area where the public works people park. We have done away with that okay, one. Okay, so how are they going to pull up there and park then? Around the corner. By, by, instead of by uh, third base, it would be over by first base. Yeah, but there's only, 
they used those parking areas in the past, so you've cut down the number of parking places those people can pull up and watch a game, haven't you? I, I wouldn't take the, you that personally. I didn't do it. Uh, <laughs> I think I mentioned that a long, long time ago, but I don't think it got carried very far. I, mean, I think maybe it's a planning board or whatever board it is. It's very short-sighted. It, it, it did, you know, I think this is, this is the perfect example of, you know, on the one hand, we're criticized for not using consultants and engineers and professionals. You know, I think the early writers of that. And on the other hand, when you use them, we don't like their advice, and uh, that is true. this is this is a case where you know <laughs> we we adopted their advice, and uh, we'll have to live with it. Not thinking of people like the Reverend and I. We do not classify you gentlemen as elderly. Further discussion on this issue. We meet the criteria. All those in favor. The vote is seven to zero. Thank you very much. Item number 57, to consider the adoption of town council goals for the current fiscal year and take any necessary action. Um, the, the process uh, each year town council in uh, establishing priority goals has uh, differed uh, somewhat each year, but uh, over the last uh, a couple of months, the current town council members have established a priority order by uh, essentially uh, all of us ranking approximately 50 goals that we all uh, put forth at a workshop, and then the uh, we, we all rank them, our picks for the highest uh, 12, then the high 12, and then the mid 12, and then uh, they were all uh, categorized for the top 15 in each of those three categories, and then the bottom five basically were dropped. So it was a very democratic process. Uh, the goals were given to the uh, local press, and on Saturday's paper chose to focus on the five goals we dropped, and rather than the 45 goals that we wanted to focus on over the course of the year. Rather than reading all 45, however, for our uh, viewing audience, I will quickly go through just the top 15 because I do think it's important to let the uh, viewers know uh, in priority order the highest priority goals that, uh, although noble they be, may they be, uh, our hope is to uh, do a good job of them over the course of this year. One is to resolve the issue of sewer capacity and sewer availability. Two is to resolve the Thomas Jordan Trust issue. Three is to open Portland Headlight Museum. Four, open 1226 Shore Road. Five, maintain affordability of living in Cape Elizabeth. Six, explore restructuring and reorganization, town and school services. Seven, decide if Route 77 should have traffic signals. Eight, further the one town concept. Nine, begin work on Shore Road shoulder improvements. 10, avoid lawsuits. 11, further the one town concept within town departments. 12, continue roadway drainage improvements. 13, develop a unified capital improvements program. 14, commence work on the town center plan. And lastly, 15, explore regionalization of services. Uh, those were the highest priority goals. And I'd be happy to hear any other input <coughs> from my fellow counselors prior to a motion to accept these uh, 45 goals. Councilor Jordan. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we approve the 45 goals as printed. Second. With the recommendation that either the manager or the council chairman speak with a reporter from the Cape Courier so that this is publicized through that vehicle also. Thank you. Uh, we have a motion. We have a second. Further discussion? All those in favor? Thank you very much. Unanimous vote, 7-0. Item number 58 is to consider a request from Planned Parenthood of Northern New England to reallocate funds that had been appropriated for its predecessor agency, Southern Coastal Family Planning, and take any necessary action. I will defer to the town manager. Uh, thank you. For eight or nine years, the town council has been providing assistance through its human services funding each year to Southern Coastal Family Planning. In April of 1991, Southern Coastal Family Planning merged with Planned Parenthood of Northern New England. Uh, we received a letter dated July 26 asking for their funds. Uh, back in June, uh, the 
town council agreed to carry forward $456 since we had not yet received this request. For fiscal year uh, 1992, the current year, you had appropriated $479. Essentially, uh, Planned Parenthood is providing all of the services that, were that had been provided by Southern Coastal Family Planning, and they're also providing new services, including uh, some treatment of males for sexually transmitted diseases and other services for low-income uh, women. Uh, so this is merely to reallocate funds uh, previously appropriated from one agency to its successor agency. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Could I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? The vote is unanimous, 7-0. Item 59 is to consider a request from the United States Coast Guard to utilize Fort Williams Park from September 15, 1991 to September 27, 1991 for a Navy mobile inshore undersea warfare unit and take any necessary action. I will defer to our town manager. This would be the third time that this particular outfit goes to Fort Williams. What, what they do is uh, have an encampment, and I believe they also put up an antenna which is uh, on the field at Portland Headlight, way, way over near the Delano Park side. It's never interfered with any practice, and with the one exception, people tend to walk over and find it interesting to speak with the personnel on duty and to find out what they're doing. But uh, it's never been a problem in the past, and the Fort Williams Advisory Commission did review this and unanimously recommends that you approve the use. It's also uh, clear that the um uh, rain date of the British car show, which could be on September 15th if the original uh, date is rained out, uh, this would not interfere with that particular show. Mr. Chairman. Councilor Jordan. I'll make a motion that permission be granted. Seconding. Okay. Motion and a second. Any further discussion, Councilor McLaughlin? This is the same Coast Guard that still owes us money. The, uh, well, it's, that's debatable. <laughs> Uh, they do owe us $10,758, oh, and they're waiting for us to sign a lease uh, amendment. Depending on what happens with Congress, I may sign that before we get into a debate on that money. Uh, the, uh, beyond that, there's, there's still the pending issue of a larger sum of money, and uh, we've been in contact with the delegation on that, and it's not, it's, it remains unresolved. I'm going to support the motion, but it still irks me considerably that the Coast Guard has dragged its heels in this financial matter. Thank you. Council Coxell. No, I'm ready to vote. I'm delighted to hear that. <laughs> uh, all those in favor of the motion, please signify. It is a 7-0 vote. Thank you very much. Item number 60 <clears throat> this evening is to consider a request from Katrina Stout to abate taxes on 5 Orchid Road this is found on map U4-141 in the amount of $178.56 for fiscal year 1990 and $168.39 for fiscal year 1991 and take any necessary action. I will defer to the town manager. Yeah, state law provides that the assessor can abate taxes for the current year and uh, councils, councils can for any, for the two preceding years. Uh, this particular property, Mr. Daigle did discover an error in its uh, valuation based on the size and configuration of the lot, and uh, the owner of the property has requested the town council to abate uh, it, at the same level in terms of valuation uh, fiscal year 1991 that Jerry did. Uh, they've requested for to, that the council go back to FY90 and FY89 for the amounts that were stated by Chairman Creelman in the Council item. May I have a motion, please? Mr. Chairman, I'll move that we allow the abatement of taxes of 5 Orchid Road on lot U4-141 for the sum of 178.56 for the year 1990 and 168.39 for the year 1989. Second. The, the, the second figure was for fiscal year... Oh, excuse me, 89. 91. 91. 91, it says 89. Oh, it's fine. 91. Is it... Oh, no. So it's 89. 89. 89. 89. Councillor Jordan was right. The, yeah. the, uh, Thank you. We have the recommendation was right. wrong. 
Our yeah. recommendation yeah. was wrong. That should be amended. Uh, the $168.39 for fiscal year 89. The lower amount for 89, the higher amount for 90. Yes, that makes better sense. Council Mr. Laughlin. Chairman, I have a question. How did this come to light? Was this during the normal course of events? I'm envisioning people watching this and wondering if such a windfall may come their way. Yes. Or if the, you know, yes, it may help. Here goes our audience. No, no, no. no. I mean, I, did the property owner, do you know if the property owner came in with a question or is this something Mr. Yes. Daigle discovered? No, so it was, no, in, it was initiated by the property owner. Yeah. Oh, okay, thank you. We have a motion and a second. Further discussion? All those in favor of the abatement? Vote is 7-0. Thank you very much. Item number 61 involves uh, considering a report from the Appointments Committee regarding the Town Center Planning Committee and taking any necessary action. Ms. McLaughlin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I wish to abstain on this item because of the appearance of a conflict. I do have a professional relationship with one of the proposed committee members. Is there any debate uh, with fellow councillors about the uh, appropriateness of the abstaining? No problem, me. Fine. Thank uh, you. You are entitled to abstain. Any other issues? Councillor Coggle. Mr. Chairman, I too uh, would abstain from participating in discussion this, of this issue because of a perceived conflict. Is there, any, <laughs> is there any debate on this particular perceived uh, conflict of interest? <laughs> No problem. Seeing none, we will be happy for both of our colleagues to abstain on this particular issue, which Very bad. gives us five, five left to deal with this item. And I will defer at this time to the chair of our appointments committee, uh, Councillor Pearson. Thank you, Chairman Kramer. Uh Prior to making these recommendations on behalf of the appointments uh, committee, I wish to thank all the citizens that uh, took the time to apply and, and let their interest be known uh, for this uh, very important committee, which is the Town Center Planning Committee. Uh, as usual, there are many more applicants than positions that we are available to fill. Uh, and once again, we thank you for the, the excellent interest which is uh, prevalent in the town of Cape Elizabeth uh, as far as volunteerism. Uh, without further ado, uh, the recommendations of this committee uh, for the chairman of the committee is Bruce Cogsell, who shall also be the citizen representative at large, Kathleen Connor, a second citizen representative at large, Thomas Tinsman, a town center business owner, Jerry Murray, a town center resident, and we have Joseph Fol Foley, who is a member of the Main Street 90 town center planning subcommittee. Uh, we also have Thomas Emery as a planning board designee and Loretta Pond as a school board designee. Uh, and that's our recommendations, and we hope that you'll agree to them. Thank you, Councillor uh, Pearson. Uh, in addition to the above recommended individuals pursuant to the council vote um, on this issue, um, I had the prerogative to recommend two council members to also serve on the committee, uh, and I have appointed uh, Councillor Pearson and Councillor Chapel uh, to serve on this committee, if you're willing. I'm willing. Somebody's got to watch it. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate your willingness to serve on this, as already noted, extraordinarily important uh, committee. Could I have a motion of acceptance of these recommended distinguished uh, individuals of Cape Elizabeth for appointment to the Town Center uh, Planning Committee? Councilor Pearson. Yes, Councilor Prelman, I uh, that we accept the appointments as recommended by the uh, Appointments Committee and also your recommendations uh, as stated. Do I hear a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. Is there further discussion? All those in favor? The vote is unanimous. Thank you very much. One, one question, now that's all. How do you choose a chairman? Do you people pick them out, or do you know that? Seems so the committee when they first start. I have no, no problem with the chairman. I, I know the gentleman. I have 
highly regards for him, and I think he'd do an excellent job. But I'm just wondering, is this a fair way of doing it? Should they have? Yes. It's the way the uh, council chose to have this committee selected. Okay. And it varies depending on the committee. Uh, but oftentimes when it is a, uh, a committee with a, a, a task such as this, uh, a specific task that lasts for about a year, this is the usual procedure. Thank you for the clarification, Jane. Welcome back. Thank you. Item number 50, 62, excuse me, is to consider uh, accepting local road assistance program funds and certifying that such funds will be used only for the maintenance and improvement of public roads and take any necessary action. Mr. Manager. Yes, every year MDOT sends us this uh, form which they, they send after the July council meeting that has to be back by August 1 uh, to certify these funds will be used right. It's $63,924 in local road assistance funds. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Vote is 7-0. Thank you very much. Item 63 is to consider accepting various gifts and take any necessary action. Mr. Manager. Yeah, the council has uh, on the podium before you a list of gifts. Uh, <coughs> all together for Family Fun Day, $853 from, from various parties, uh, a particularly generous donation from the Cape Elizabeth Police Patrolman's Association. Uh, Jordan's Lawn and Garden Center, Gilly Jordan and Barbara Jordan, uh, donated all the flowers out in our window boxes and out front uh, in the planter at the side of the building here. Also the flowers at the fire station, which Ken Maxwell planted, and all of the flowers, which are a considerable amount uh, outside Portland Headlight. Uh, over here on the, the uh, rack, you'll see a painting uh, that's being donated by the Lions Club for 1226 Shore Road. It's by a Spanish artist who was visiting the Lions Club last year, and it's a, an attractive painting of a, of a Spanish scene. Uh, Mrs. Joan Ralston made a, a, a generous contribution for tree planting at Fort Williams. All of you know Mrs. Ralston uh, served very ably on the Fort Williams Advisory Commission for six years. Uh, the Lions Club donated $1,300 for a police video camera. In addition to that, Arlene and C.W. Davis Jr. and Ellen D. Westcott made generous donations uh, for, a police, for a police video camera. The Cape Elizabeth Lions Club is donating $600 uh, for the DEA program uh, to assist with uh, substance abuse education issues uh, in the schools. I, I didn't mention the particular amounts of some of the, the individuals because I'm not sure they would want them publicly disclosed. Uh, beyond that, uh, you will be receiving a list uh, shortly of library gifts and more veterans gifts, uh, which we'll ask you to do separately. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't find the file last week uh, of uh, all, all of the gifts, and I thought we, we had all those listed, particularly the war veterans, but uh, they have it all on a good computer system. And rather than dig through all our records, which we do have, we could find them, it'd be a lot easier to, uh, to get them straight off that computer. Thank you very much, Mr. Manager. Could I have a motion to consider accepting the various gifts the town manager has just uh, discussed? So moved. A second? A second? A second? A second? Yes. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Thank you very much. Unanimous vote of 7-0. Item number 64 is to consider the status of a lease of building number 326 at Fort Williams Park and take any necessary action. I will defer to the town manager to tell us about the other Girl Scout building. Yeah. This is the former Girl Scout building at Fort Williams Park. Uh, actually, they have a lease extending until uh, September 1st for the building. Uh, this does provide for a five-year lease. The rental amount over the five years is $45,000. Uh, you look at it on a monthly basis, it doesn't look that high. Uh, however, uh, I think we do need to recognize that the, the tenant is still responsible for heating the building and for electricity, including some outside lighting, which, which we've discovered is extremely expensive. Uh, day one is currently located at 160 Fox Street in Portland, the C.H. Robinson building, as well as having an office on Ocean Avenue in Portland. They would be using the building for their administrative offices as well as daytime only family counseling. 
the uh, we've been very happy to work with them. I you know I, I wish I could bring you forward a, a lease with a greater rental amount, but uh, I think we're, we're extremely fortunate with the current rental situation in the Greater Portland market to uh, have a tenant uh, who's going to pay to heat the building and. Uh, Keep it keep it in good shape so that we don't run into problems with this building, like early ones we discussed. The building we discussed earlier this evening. Beyond that, I would like to mention that there are two requirements uh, we put out to bid uh, the painting of the interior of the building. It hadn't been done in 10 years. That we received about four bids back. That came in at $5,200. Uh, secondly, we do need to make this building accessible to the handicap, particularly the first floor. And that uh, I'm working with uh, Tom Emery uh, to design something so that we will have a, a suitable uh, uh, entry way. Besides that, there's a number of fire code issues that we plan to address. So there is an expense. You know, I think whenever you, you have a building that's empty after 10 years, and uh, I'm going ahead getting the work done. Uh, assuming uh, we do want the building occupied and up to code and clean and ready for a new tenant. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Might I have a motion on this issue? So move. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Go to 7 zero. Last item on the agenda tonight is item number 65. This is to consider a report from the town manager on the Shore Road Shoulder Improvement Project and take any necessary action. Mr. McGovern. During the past month, we also solicited bids from engineering firms to uh, design the, sh the Shore Road Shoulder Improvements. I believe we received six, five or six proposals all together. Uh, we had a subcommittee review the proposals consisting of the town plan and the director of public works and myself. Uh, we unanimously agreed uh, to have DeLuca and Hoffman do the work. Uh, they're a very reputable engineering firm. Uh, Mr. Hoffman designed our sewer treatment plant on Frank Avenue when he once worked for another firm. And Mr. DeLuca served as the capabilities of a town engineer back in the early 1970s when it was a full-time position. So both are, are fairly familiar with Cape Elizabeth. Uh, the engineering cost is 17100 excluding wetland delineation. Uh, we are working with a subcontractor, Timpson, Schweppes, and Peters, uh, to delineate the wetlands. The estimated cost of that uh, at the level we're going at this point is about $800. Uh, a major issue, even with President Bush's new pronouncement uh, this, this past week, is you know, how we're going to deal with wetlands. Uh, Maureen looked into it some, Maureen O'Meara, the town planner, and uh, she prepared a memo uh, that indicates that it, it is possible that if we do impact the wetlands, if we do impact the wetlands, it's definite that we would need permits, uh, a special permit from the planning board using uh, the extensive criteria under the wetlands ordinance. Furthermore, it, it is very possible that we could need a DEP wetland alteration permit and a U.S. Army Corps of Engineers permit. Uh, my past experience trying to get these permits is that it maybe it'd be better if we stay out of the wetland rather than uh, entered the morass of, of permitting, uh, particularly w with those other agencies. Uh, I'm, I'm fearful we could spend the, the full $125,000 set aside for this project on, on just permitting and not do anything. So uh, what I'd like to do is to, to begin the work pursuant to the goals that you adopted <coughs> this evening, uh, to set aside $25,000 for the soft costs, which include the permitting, uh, what permitting we do need to do, the engineering, the wetland delineation, uh, construction, management, everything. I'd, I don't, that, that would be a, a top level. I don't think it would be that. And with a remaining 100,000, begin work. Uh, start down at the fort end, work our way up in those areas that are delineated as wetlands uh, to essentially go, go around them. Uh, and that, uh, you know, in the meantime, as we see how the project evolves and how the cost is and what the financial capacity of the community is over the next uh, few years, more funds could be set aside by the council, and perhaps you could fill in. Uh, that's a poor word. That's very uh, you, <laughs> you could uh, look at uh, completing some of the uh, portions of, of this that uh, may have been uh, passed by uh, in the interim. 
So that's my recommendation is that you, you authorize uh, me to continue uh, on this project uh, on the basis that the memo dated August 6, 1991 describes. We have a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move that we, what are we doing here, authorize the expenditure of up to $25,000 for engineering and soft costs for the Sherrill Shoulder Improvements and up to $100,000 to begin the actual construction of such improvements starting at the, the fort entrance and extending the project on both sides of Shore Road as far as that money will, will take us. Going with, with the stipulation that depending on the extent of wetlands being delineated, we avoid instances where we need permits from agencies other than the planning board. No, we need any permits dealing with wetlands. Extending toward Route 77. Extending tw southerly, southerly towards Route 77. We have a motion. Second. And a second. Further discussion? All those in Mr. Favor. Chairman. Uh, oh, yes. Excuse me. <laughs> I, I think the manager has come up with a very sensible scenario for dealing with the situation, knowing that we indeed would be into Army Corps and DEP permitting with my experience with them and another town wetlands. I also would encourage us to follow up with a recommendation from the planner that we meet in a workshop session with the planning board to discuss shoulder improvements. I know they're quite concerned about the classification of roads within the town and I think this would afford us a very good opportunity to initiate that discussion with them. Excellent recommendation. We do have a motion, we do have a second. With further discussion, all those in favor, unanimous vote. At this point, I would entertain any citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda. Seeing none, I will ask for adjournment. Hello. Citizens, Second. all those in favor, <laughs> unanimous. Thank you very much. The meeting is over. Uh, the council is asking me about having a picture.